Voucher, hello and welcome to Keith's Whiskey Vlog. My name is Keith. You'll find me here obviously on YouTube and also on Instagram at Whiskey Tour Guide Keith. Check out my other videos, all things whiskey related. Today I'm going to do a little whiskey tasting for you. It's a hard job, but somebody has to do it. This is what I'm going to be tasting for you. It comes from the magical island of Isla, the Queen of the Hebrides. And this is from the Kilhoman Distillery. Now Kilhoman, it's not really an English origin word, it comes from Gaelic originally. Anytime you see the K-I-L, that comes from the Gaelic word for church. And there's no hard K in Kilhoman, so just ignore the C, so it's Kilhoman, Kilhoman. And what I'm going to review for you today is the Kilhoman Sanig. Now the AIG, talking about Gaelic, it is Gaelic, but the AIG actually comes from the Old Norse, so it shows there's a bit of Viking influence on the Isle of Isla as well. So we've got Kilhoman Sanig. So I'm going to read you some of the promotional stuff on the bottle, on the carton as well. Um, right at the front here, this little bar tells you that the Kilhoman Sanig, it's a vatting, which basically means it's a mixture of whiskey from bourbon barrels and from sherry barrels and there's about two-thirds sherry one-third bourbon it's quite a young whiskey there's no age statement nas but uh, it's generally believed i think to be around about just four or five years old so relatively young so what they say about the distillery first of all uh, on the the back of the box here Kilhoman Distillery sits nestled amongst the traditional buildings of Rockside Farm on the northwest coast of Isla. Famous as Isla's farm distillery, the distillery's barley fields stretch west to the shores of Macher Bay and the Atlantic Ocean. Kilhoman is unique in many ways, most notably for our 100% Isla range, Scotland's only single farm, single malt. The Rockside Farm, uh, they used to grow barley and then they would give it away to, well not give it away, they'd sell it on to distilleries and they had this bright idea as some farms do, I'll tell you what, why don't we keep some of it and make some of our own whiskey? So that's how Kilhoman started off and the 100% Isla, a single farm, a single malt, that basically means that everything comes from that one place, they don't get any barley in. Uh, now they do for other Kilhoman expressions, but for the Kilhoman 100% Isla, all the barley on site, all the water, everything is done on site. And Kilhoman do all their own sort of bottling, labelling, etc, etc. Everything is done on site. It doesn't get shipped away. There's no external sort of companies, contractors, anything like that. Everything they do is on site. Often you'll go into the shop in Kilhoman and uh, the tour guides, the girls that do the tours, might just be sitting there at the checkout at the till and just building the boxes, putting labels on the bottles, that sort of thing. Really nice little place. So, uh, established in 2005 until recently, it was the youngest, the newest distillery on Isla. It's been usurped now by Arden the Hole. So established in 2005, Kilhoman is true to Isla's rich farm distilling heritage, using local peat cut in the tradi traditional way, slowly distilling by hand, maturing in traditional dunnage warehouses and bottling on site without colouring or chill filtration. And that pleases the purists because they don't like artificial colours and they don't like chill filtration. So it's all in the bottle. All the goodness is in the bottle. What you see is what comes out of the barrel. Sanig, named after a weather-beaten headland northwest of the distillery, uh, is a vatting of both sherry and bourbon casks. The high proportion of sherry cask maturation creates a distinctively rich fruity character balanced with citrus, caramel and peat smoke. Rich layers of dark chocolate, honey, festive spices and ripe fruit infused with Isla peat smoke and classic Kilhoman citrus sweetness. And that is signed by Anthony Wills who's the the owner, the founder of Kilhoman. Distilled, matured and bottled by Kilhoman Isla's Farm Distillery. So it's quite a new distillery. It was originally a farm. 
they are actually sort of buying up surrounding farms and fields so they make they make a lot of their own barley they still have to get some in but they do make a lot of their own barley um, and the distillery as it's sort of growing they're extending it building new sort of still houses a new sort of visitor centre I suppose they've had a cafe there but they're expanding that a uh, new shop so uh, really quite an interesting and happening place I suppose the Kilhoman distillery on Isla if you do ever get the chance to visit you might see a couple of little cats running about and uh, if you've been there you know the cats names but the cats are called Pete and Smokey what else are they going to be I suppose right now it's a bit of a sad day for me this because this bottle of Sanig is coming to an end again I've been saving it a little bit for the whiskey review but uh, I got given this uh, by my rather resourceful under 18 children who for Father's Day last year obviously with the help of my good lady wife managed to get me a bottle of Kilhoman Sanig so I'd never had it before and I was very 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 impressed impressed enough that although 2020 was a little bit of a, a dry year for trying new whiskies out of all the ones that I did try last year 2020 I decided this was my favorite of the year so really quite an impressive whiskey four or five years old and very dark in color you can't quite see it here because there's not much maybe you'll see it once it is out and into the glass now anything else on the bottle beautiful bottles as well nice and stumpy these would be good in a pub fight I think these ones uh, give somebody a good clout but um, beautiful bottles different shape I do like the way that most of the time that whiskey is presented um, I think it is an important part of it. it may be superficial to some people but I think it is an important part so yes yeah, just again says non chill filtered natural color 46% um, alcohol and embossed on the base there Hyla's farm and distillery so a really nice bottle I was considering this bottle as the the one I was going to use for my infinity bottle if you're not sure what an infinity bottle is check out my other video and uh, see what they're all about but I decided it was just a bit too Kilhoman Kilhoman's fine but I wanted a, a planer bottle so a really nice bottle um, now this comes in at 50 ppm peat parts per million so it's quite quite, quite a good uh, good earthiness to it a really nice whiskey I don't know if you can see the, the cork here as well a bit thicker rounder top than most corks but more to it just feels good as I say it's always good for makes you feel good when you're drinking it I suppose nothing wrong with that okay so let's get some in the glass okay one there we go and a decent measure again Now, it's won various awards, the uh, Sanig. Get the thing back on. Uh, take a little note of what they were. They've got the Ultimate Spirits Challenge in 2020. It won the Best Isla Whiskey. The International Wine and Spirits Competition. It was the Best Non-Age Statement Single Malt. Uh, best Isla Whiskey. And uh, the Interna oh, what else? Uh, Ultimate Spirits Challenge in 2020. I think it was the, the best Isla whiskey as well. So it's decorated, you could say. But it really is a quite an impressive whiskey. So you might be able to see it now. Very dark in colour. As I say, four or five years old, so um very intriguing. So on the nose. It's actually it's quite, sober, it's quite clean. It's got a sweetness, it's got a bit of a fruitiness. There's a little bit of um, peat smoke, a little bit of earthiness. It's actually sort of tingling my nose a little bit. Almost 
almost a little bit of floral, almost, just maybe a sort of a, that sort of heathery smell. And a bit of a, quite sort of orange, lemon, citrus fruits, almost like a little bit of sort of zest, quite zesty. So quite light in the nose, but quite sweet and nothing stereotypically Isla that I really get at the moment. So in the mouth. <laughs> and there's the Isla. And this is <laughs> straight away why it was my favourite whiskey last year. Really smoky. It's sort of almost like a. It's not often described the Isla smoke as your sort of dirty, the warehouse floor, the scrapings, that sort of thing. But this is more sort of more sort of campfire. It's a lighter smoke. It doesn't describe the taste, but it's more of a greyer smoke than a blacker smoke. If that makes any sense. Not the most full bodied, not the most rounded, but there is enough underneath, sort of a thicker fruitiness, and you're starting to go more into your sort of darker, deeper, almost sort of stewed fruits. You're talking, again, maybe sort of plums, that sort of thing. Um, not quite going on full on Christmas cake, but into the sort of, let's say, sort of stewed plums, stewed cherries, that sort of area. Start to see the legs really quite thick, long legs as well. Going down the glass there. It mentioned it, I think, on the box. You just got an ever so slight, <coughs> um, not quite bitter chocolate, but certainly dark chocolate. You do get a bit, a bit of that coming around the outside somehow almost. But again, for a four or five year old whiskey, it really packs a lot in. There's a lot going on, there's a lot to it. Maybe not the fullest, but certainly pings here and there. Oh, very nice. So, tried it in the nose, tried it in the mouth. We'll add a little bit of water, see what that does. Now, I'm only going to put two drops in this. I don't think it'll need much to. To change it a good bit. Nothing there. No. Toss. Always interesting with water. I don't actually think I've tried this one with water. Because sometimes water massively changes it, sometimes hardly at all. So. First time I've tried it with any water. The, <laughs> the most common expression we use when we're talking about adding water to whiskey is it opens up, and that has opened up. That's much wider now, uh, much more depth, sweeter, more sort of that toffee now coming through. So that's maybe the, the oak, the barrel being released a little bit, the, the bourbon barrel, I should say. Not as sweet in the mouth. That smokiness has calmed down a little bit, but it's still the most prevalent. It's the biggest influence still there. I'd say I prefer it on the nose with the water, but I prefer it neat rather than adding the water. Now I drink a lot of my whiskey neat. I don't add water too often when I'm drinking for pleasure, but uh, it's not bad, but I would say it's a little bit better neat. So there you go, there's the Kilhoman Sanig, a very worthwhile whiskey.
give it a shot, look out for it, and that's the heat now finally. Again, that just be the, the lack of age, the lack of pure proper depth in it. <sighs> Another one bites the dust, but I did take precautions. Let's get to a good Keith pointer. We have a Kilhoman on the shelf, completely full, ready to go. Last week I bought myself a Machier Bay. Now I've tried the Machier Bay before, and that was my favourite Kilhoman until I got this one through. So uh, it shouldn't be long until I get that open. We'll do a review of it for you, tell you a bit more about the Kilhoman distillery, Machier Bay as well. Um, a little lighter, that's more of a bourbon. Um, whiskey, bourbon influenced whiskey, but it's got that real Isla smoke to it. Now, my recommendations, if you like this, also try, or if you can't get this, look out instead for the Machier Bay, would be one of my recommendations. Another one would be this one right here, the Laphroaig Quarter Cask, also from Isla, and it's quite an intense um, Laphroaig, not for the faint-hearted. Packs a bit of punch, quite bright, obvious. So that would be two. What else would I maybe think about trying for the uh, sort of recommendations now? Also on Isla, I mean, it, it, it'd have to be something from Isla. Uh, two or three, four years ago now at Ardbeg, they released a limited edition called Dark Cove, the Ardbeg Dark Cove. And that was a really, really nice whiskey. Just short of spectacular, but really, really nice. So look out for the Kilhoman Sanig. If you can't get it, try the Lafroy Quarter Cask, or the Kilhoman Macker Bay, or if you can find one, or if you've still got one, the Ardbeg Dark Cove. So that's me for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed the Kilhoman Sanig tasting. Follow other videos. I sample lots of whiskies, predominantly Isla, but many more as well. If you'd like to get in touch, get in touch through the comments, let me know what you think, any questions, etc. Um, but yeah, follow, like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, and hopefully we'll see each other again at some point. So all the best. Cheers for now. Slanjava.